Hello everyone and welcome to this week's After Effects quick tip scripting tutorial. In this one, I'm going to be giving you a script UI layout guide that will allow you to create more elaborate and complex UIs like this one. Essentially, we're going to be mainly going over how to create groups within groups and this will allow us to create complex organizations and orientations like this where we have inside of a panel a row and a column of a group. Then on a greater and macro scale, we have multiple panels being oriented in a row and a column and a couple of other useful features. So most of the heavy work of this quick tip tutorial is gonna be just creating a bunch of buttons, which is copy and paste type stuff, but we're also gonna be going over how to create groups inside of groups and groups inside of panels to create, again, these more complex orientations. And a reminder to hit the subscribe button and the bell icon down below to make sure you're notified whenever these new videos are coming out on Monday and Thursday. And in the description of this video, you can check out the GitHub link for the code for the script, as well as there's an Instagram link where you can follow us to be updated of when videos are live. And of course, make sure you join us on the Discord where we have a thriving community already, having general scripting, extension, and plugin discussions, as well as asking lots of questions and learning from each other. So let's go ahead and get started by creating a new JavaScript extended file. And we're gonna start off by creating a window for all this. We'll just call it the window. And we'll set this equal to a new window. The type is gonna be a palette. We won't have a name for it. And the size will be undefined. Then inside of our main window, we need to think of our organization here. Typically a window is just a column or row orientation. This means that all of the groups or panels inside of it will go from top to bottom or left to right. But this is gonna work a little bit differently instead of just having all rows or all column, we want to have a row and a column essentially. So we wanna have three panels, but typically if we had three panels all in a column, they're just gonna be one, two, three, or if they are in a row, they would be side by side, one, two, three. So the way we're gonna essentially get around this is by creating groups inside of groups. So what we're gonna do is say window.orientation is equal to column. And the reason we're setting it to column is because we can go from top to bottom and we're gonna have two groups. One of them is gonna be a row, and the other one can be a row as well or whatever you want. But this will allow us to have uh, rows and columns inside of our UI. So the first thing we need is like a window group. We'll just call it window group one, and set this equal to our window.add. We're gonna add a group, undefined size, and just call it window group one. Then the orientation of this is gonna be left to right, so it needs to be a row. Inside of window group one, we're gonna be putting our panel one and panel two. So we're gonna say window group one dot orientation is equal to row. Then we need to add our panel one. So I'll say panel one is equal to our window group one. And we're gonna add a panel, undefined size. And the name of that panel is panel one. Then we'll go ahead and create the second panel. We'll call it panel two and change the name. And then next up, we need to create our window group two that's gonna contain our uh, third panel. So I'm just gonna copy and paste our group one here and change the text to window group two and window group two. And then inside of here, we're gonna create panel three and set this equal to our window group two. And again, we're gonna add a panel, undefined size, and we'll just call it panel three. So now if I go ahead and take my window and I center it, and then I take my window again and I show it, when we run this in After Effects, you can see we have the proper layout. We have two panels in a row, and then we also have a second column with a single panel, which you could add more if you wanted to. Um, for example, if I wanted to add panel four, I could simply call it panel four, and this would give us a sort of two by two, but you could also change the second uh, sort of sub window group to be a column, and this would make it even different. So you could have a row and then a column of your subgroups. So the main thing here is just to remember that you can create different subgroups inside of subgroups. And these don't even have to be groups. You could make these window groups in um, panels to better illustrate um, how they're containing everything like this. You can see that this particular subgroup is a, a, a row and this particular one is a column. So if you ever need a more visual way of seeing what's going on in the background sometimes, uh, using a panel instead of a group is a good way. So now we're going to go ahead and create 
uh, even more specific groups inside of our panels. So we have our window groups, which contain our panels, and inside of our panels, which are groups in themselves, we're gonna have even more subgroups. Hopefully it's not getting too complicated, but this is how more complicated UIs work. So in the original example, we basically had inside of here, two more groups inside of panel one. So I'm gonna create a sort of panel one subgroups. I'll say panel, I'll say panel one, group one is equal to our panel one. We're gonna add a group, undefined size, and we're just gonna call it panel one, group one. Then we're gonna set the orientation of this to be a row, so we can put in these first three buttons here. And we're gonna do that by grabbing our group here and setting the orientation to row. Then we're gonna create a second panel group, and this one is gonna be a column instead of a row, and we're gonna change the name to panel one group two instead of panel one group one. Now when we run this, we're not gonna see much of a difference except there's some space in here for the groups we've created. I'm gonna go ahead and populate this now with buttons. So inside of our panel one group one, we're gonna add our first button, we'll call it button one, and we'll set this equal to our panel one group one. We'll add a button, undefined size, and we'll just put in the number one. Another thing I'm gonna do at the very top is say button size is equal to a custom size. So I can set all the buttons equal to the same size with, with just this variable. So um, after we've defined our button here, I'm gonna say button one dot size is equal to our button size. And I just need to remove the variable and now we should have our first button inside of here. What I'm gonna do now is duplicate our button to create number two and three inside of this first group. And all we need to do for that is change the text and the variable names to be two and three, which is a pretty quick process. And now if we have a look, you can see we have our first three buttons. Now we have this secondary inner group inside of panel one where we can have a column of buttons. So I can just continue to copy and paste my buttons here. Say button four, button five, and we'll change the names here to button four, number four, and button five, changing the variable name and the text. And now you can see we have a full row of them. We need to actually add this to the proper group. It's adding it to the first group. We need to add them to the second subgroup. And I actually forgot to set the orientation of my panel, which needs to be a row itself. So I'll say orientation is equal to row. And now we have the proper setup with a row, subgroup, and a column inside of there. Now I can go ahead and quickly populate my second panel, which is just gonna be a row. And this is gonna be button six and button seven. And then I'll just change the text here. And then I also need to tell panel two, the orientation needs to be a row. Hopefully all this repetition will help you uh, create scripts as well a little bit faster, at least the UI part. And I'm again adding these to the wrong panel, I believe. This just needs to be added to panel two, not panel one. And now we have our second panel. And now let's just move on to our third panel, which has, in our original example, uh, two rows of buttons here. So we need to create two subgroups, just like we did for panel one, but a little bit different. So panel three, the orientation needs to be from top to bottom, so we can have row one and row two. Um, which will be two different groups. So panel three dot orientation is going to be equal to a column. And then we need to create a panel three group one. Set this equal to our panel three. We'll add a group undefined size and call it panel three group one. Then I'll set the orientation of our first subgroup panel here uh, to be a row. That way this can contain our eight, nine, 10, and 11. And then we're gonna create one more group just below it and call this panel three group two. Set that equal to a row. Now if we run the script, it's gonna look pretty much the same. We need to fill it with buttons. So we can go ahead and copy and paste our previous button text here. We'll start off inside of our panel three subgroup one, button eight. And then I'm gonna create the rest of the buttons here real quick. 9, 10, 11. And then I also need to add these to our panel three subgroup one instead of panel two, since I'm copying and pasting them from the previous 
Uh, now we have our first subgroup in panel three. We just need to create the second subgroup to fill it in. So what I'll do is copy and paste all four of these buttons and paste them below our panel three group two. We need to update the group they're being added to. And then finally, we need to update the names starting with button 12, 13, 14, and 15. And then lastly, just need to change the text inside of here to match their names. And now if I finally run the script, we should have our completed complicated script UI layout. And now we have our finished UI, which has overall groups that are helping organize a complex macro layout. And then inside of each of our panels, we have subgroups as well to have sub more complex layouts. If you guys enjoyed the video, be sure to hit the thumbs up button and hit subscribe and the bell icon down below to be notified of new videos coming out twice weekly on the channel on Mondays and Thursdays. And down in the description, you can check out the code for this project in the GitHub link and follow us on Instagram as well to be notified of when new videos go live. Of course, make sure you follow us on the new Discord channel where you can have general scripting, extension, and plugin discussions, learn from others, and help out others. And lastly, in the description, there's also some crypto addresses if you'd wish to donate in Bitcoin. Ethereum or basic attention token. Thanks again for watching everyone and we'll see you in the next one.